Hey guys, we are back. I hope everybody had a fantastic Christmas. I'm just gonna get you to hold on one sec. As I usually do, I'm going to share this on my personal page. Hopefully, there we go. What's going on? It's not letting me share it. There we go. Hey, Sheila. I'm just sharing on my timeline. I know that it's 10 o'clock there. So there we go. Um, Sheila, how is everything with um, Bo and Mocha? I am excited to hear it. Hopefully you've had some um, success with walking um, Bo around the house and keeping everything locked down for Mocha. Um, guys, tonight we have a full plate. I have had a lot of um, dog training inquiries uh, through email, on my Facebook, Messenger, everything like that. So I am going to try and do a balancing act and hopefully I don't fall off the tightrope tonight. Um, I am Michelle Sellers. I am owner and head trainer at Cascadia Dog Training. We are in North Vancouver, as you know, I'm sure. Um, and yeah, if you know somebody that need help, share this post. Let's help people out, guys. Um, excuse the sporty spice look tonight. I have been working all day. As a matter of fact, I can't believe I am back in this chair. All right. So while I'm waiting to hear from Sheila, I'm going to get to, oh, where are they? Um, yes, there's some things that I want to specifically address about New Year's Eve. Um, it's a high energy time. It is, um, can be really stressful with dogs with the fireworks, the banging of pots and pans, um, just the party atmosphere. Um, dogs are on a clock too, so staying up late can be stressful on them. Uh, let me just read what Sheila wrote here. The dogs are still having issues missing their mom. Or maybe it's the new eating and the dishes and the crates. They aren't eating as well. Bo walks well back and forth. Okay, Sheila, um, how long are you giving them to eat their food? That's my first question. So I'm going to get, uh, what I mean by that is, do you uh, have a specific amount of time before you take it away? Or are you just um, free feeding in the crate? Yeah, your dogs hate fireworks. Mine does too. Uh, I've been working with Sam on this. It's a long process, okay? And the reason is fireworks are not um, really easy to condition against unless you're going to be the crazy neighbor who goes out and lights off fireworks in your yard once a week. You're not. <laughs> please don't do that. Um, you. It's really hard to condition against because it's something that happens, let's see, uh, Halloween, New Year's, if you live in the States, probably Thanksgiving. Um, so there isn't a whole lot of time throughout the year to condition dogs. Um, one thing that's really helped um, is, oh, sorry, my nose is itchy. One thing that's really helped Sam, hey Sarah, mm -hmm. uh, one thing that's really helped Sam is the place command. Okay, so he doesn't necessarily stay super calm and super relaxed on place but right now all I'm oh my goodness you guys I have a nosebleed I will be right back
sorry guys. Uh, I should have stopped it, but then I'd have to start it again. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Did not see that coming. Okay. I am back. If you're just joining, fast forward to like the 630 mark. <sighs> All right. Um, yeah, Sarah, I hate them too. It happens to me. It's really dry here. Uh, and my sinuses suck. Hi, Tom. Uh, yeah, the dry climate doesn't help. Where, <laughs> where are you? I am back. Um, Kathleen, yes, I'm fine. It's just, it's the weather change. Um, <laughs> thanks, you guys. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, place and fireworks. Um, so, uh, pick up where I left off. Um, what's been working well with Sam uh, is the place command and also the fact that he loves his crate. We found out at Halloween, I kept him on place. And then when there was a lull in the fireworks, you know, I gave him a break. And, um, you know, what he chose to do was just go in his kennel. Um, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to close in his space a little more. So what I did was I just put a towel over the crate and he was just nice and cozy in there. Uh, and he didn't really seem that bothered by it. So St Sam's really kind of taken leaps forward, but it's because I've done the same thing every time with him when there's fireworks. I think he'll probably always be a little bit uneasy um, with, with fireworks because like I said before, they're hard to condition, right? I'm not gonna go out in my backyard and, um, and just light them off because my neighbors like me and I'd like to keep it that way. Okay. So, use the place command. Use the place command to keep your dog calm. Um, when they are calm in between fireworks, you can try high value treat reward for um, kind of conditioning that state of mind, but maybe not a good idea to do it when they're heightened because then you could actually be rewarding the fact that they're reacting to the fireworks. And we don't want to do that. So make sure all food reward during fireworks is when they're in a calm state of mind. Um, if they choose to go in their crate, that's great. Try covering it. See if that helps. Uh, but don't close the door. Maybe not close the door right away. Uh, if they go in there and they fall asleep and it's time for bed, then yeah, give it a shot. Um, so Sheila, I want to get back to you're giving them 15 to 20 minutes to eat. They don't eat every day there are days they don't eat at all it's been 12 days since alaska died alaska's mom yeah um the best thing that you can do for your dogs is be a leader for them okay so we're gonna work on structure and what i will actually want you to do to kind of give them that food drive back so a member of their family you know their pack leader probably mom has passed away uh, dogs do grieve, not necessarily in the same way that we do. Um, dogs aren't as complicated. That's actually another question that um, on those lines that I'm going to talk about. Um, but there is a grieving process that dogs go through. They know that a member of their pack is missing. Um, the worst thing that you can do for them is put your emotions around Alaska dying on the dogs. Okay, so if you're sad, which is probably a lot of the time, but if you're sad or you're upset about Alaska, the worst thing that you can do is lean on your dogs for comfort because they're going to feel that and it's going to validate anything that they're feeling. Okay. So really kind of spend the time with your dogs training. So just work through some sits and downs. And with the feeding, I want you to do five minutes. Um, part of this grieving process could be a sense of anxiety. They don't know where mom went. They don't know what's going on. And it's, it's really quite sad. Um, and it's fine. I mean, dogs can go four or five days without eating. They're never going to starve themselves. You've got to keep in mind that essentially they're a predatory animal and they're not going to do that to themselves. Um, so I want to, like I said, give them five minutes to eat. And if, you know, even if they're still eating and there's food in the bowl, I want you to take it away. Uh, what this is going to do is kind of make them realize that, you know, we've kind of done this in steps about how um, 
it isn't a free for all, right? You had the bag of food out earlier and they were just coming and going from it and Mocha was peeing on it and everything. It was a nightmare. Um, so then we started feeding them in their crates and now I'm going to cut down that time. I want there to be a sense of scarcity around the food, but I didn't want to do it all right away. Uh, and it's a good thing we didn't because with the stress of Alaska dying, that could be, um, kind of catastrophic emotionally for your dogs and, and we don't want to set them back any from how far they've come. Right, Sheila? So let's do five minutes. Uh, they've never eaten out of bowls doesn't matter um it, it's really not i mean they learn right I, I don't think it really has anything to do with the bowl i think it's the fact that um maybe you're locking down on things and they don't really like it but you know i'll have clients that uh that go oh well they only like the plastic bowl not the metal bowl doesn't matter the dog eats in what you give them that's it that's all yeah so um yeah i mean it, it all comes down to here's the food it's not going to last forever here's what you get it in you don't eat it it gets taken away so five minutes and let's see i'm just going to close the door here guys yeah so sheila when we got sam he had never eaten out a bowl either right it was just kind of a free-for-all on the ground he came from iran um Oh, good. Bo is walking really well. Awesome. Uh, Sam was really super picky about his food. He had never even really had kibble, believe it or not. Um, I had direct contact with the woman in Iran who took them in, and they don't even sell dog food there. Okay, so you can't get dog food unless you have a working dog on a farm in Iran because dogs are considered pests. They don't sell it. So we really had to get Sam's food drive back and get him eating what he was supposed to eat and out of a bowl. And it's a little troublesome when your dog's not eating, but uh, they get through it. And if they're not eating anyways, then take it away after the five minutes, use it to your advantage and get their food drug back. Um, so now that Bo is walking really well, are you talking about around the house or are you talking like out and about? Um, spend a lot of time with him. And now I actually want to start what do I want to do first with him? Nothing that's really pressure. So still slip lead and have him working the place command. Um, my YouTube video, I actually adapted how I do my place command from Josh Donahue of Argos Dog Works. Um, I love it. I've, I've kind of tweaked it a little bit for myself, but um, when Sarah Baker and I were there, Sarah, if you're still here, holla. Um, we're there, he kind of, he has these certain steps and I've adopted that. And what these little steps do is yes, you end up with place command and everything that comes along with it. But if you do the same thing every time to train it, that starts developing the trust with your dog, right? So Bo's going to start to trust you when, um, before you walk up to place, you stop two feet in front of it every single time that you're training it okay then you're going to walk up aside calmly say place and stop and that's it that's all i want you to repeat um for this week i want to move really slow with Bo uh because um yeah he's he's kind of scattered right and he's just been rehomed with his siblings and then mom died so let's take it really slow so you're just going to walk up stop two feet short then you're going to say place walk him beside it and then when you leave with the leash you're just going to say break and you're going to wash rinse, repeat okay do that for a week and then we will talk about that after um are there any other issues with mocha answer that inside slip lead yeah great you are doing amazing. I am really proud of you, Sheila. Okay, so we talked about the New Year's Eve fireworks. Um, I actually got a message from my friend Tom who said that I've heard that laughing at your dog when they do something funny is hard on them. Do they get embarrassed and need positive reassurance? Is this true? 
They get embarrassed and need positive reassurance. This is true. Okay, so I made some notes on this um, based on my conversation with him. And going back to what I said before uh, with the grieving process, dogs really aren't that complicated emotionally. Okay, they're not like us. Um, they don't sit there and think about everything. Um, I think what he's talking about specifically is he put booties on his dog to go out for a walk in the snow and his dog looked really super embarrassed and he was telling me how he didn't want to laugh in front of his dog so he filmed it so he could laugh at it later because he thought his dog would get embarrassed and need positive reassurance. Um, I saw the video Tom and your dog looked pretty embarrassed without even you laughing at him. Maybe he could hear Gordon and I laughing from you know the other side of Canada, I don't know, but um, what actually happens is more of a conditioned response, I think, right, from what I know about dogs. So when, I'm just reading off my notes here, but when we do something the dog doesn't like, like put a hat or booties on them, and then we laugh at them, it becomes an associated emotion, okay? They're, they're, uh, it could actually be a sign of anxiety. Um, so they can't understand why we act happy when they're uncomfortable. Does that make sense? You following me? So think of it like this. Every time they put those stupid booties on me, they make that happy noise. I hate the booties and therefore I hate the happy noise that's associated with them. So I don't think that it has anything to do with the fact that your dog's actually embarrassed. I think they're associating the emotion that they're uncomfortable with the fact that you're happy with it. It's quite confusing. So, I mean, we laugh at Sam all the time and he doesn't really seem to care. It is true, some dogs are more sensitive. So, um, yeah, verdict, probably don't need positive reinsurance. He probably just hates the boots. Um, Sheila, Mocha walks well, heels good, working on the treadmill, it's slow. Yes, okay, so treadmill training can be quite slow and tricky. Uh, if I remember correctly, I had you have him just on the belt, not even turning it on. Is that correct? Um, treadmill training is also going to be slip lead. I wouldn't recommend, I don't know if I told you that, but let's have him on a slip lead uh, and holding it from the other end of it. And you can actually have some high value treats um, coming from, so there's, I don't know how close it is to the wall or whatever for you, but there's the treadmill and then there's the part with all the controls. If you can come in here and he's on the actual treadmill and you can have him here holding the slip lead, so holding him forward and then give him treats through that little slot underneath under all the controls, that would be really good. And then eventually you'll start to notice he'll just start to focus and you might have your husband or one of the kids come up and about every 30 seconds, just turn it up one and then turn it up one and then turn it up one. It is a slow process, but we'll get there. Uh, I think, oh, it is right at the wall. Okay, that's fine. Um, go up beside it then and go up as high as you can and go beside it and kind of hold the leash with one hand and treats with the other. Four minutes, that's incredible. Um, what happens at the four minute mark? I'm wondering if he just freaks out or if he, uh, just kind of says that's enough and you know start to revolve a little bit uh i'm actually wondering if it's time to start turning it up um so another new year's question oh he jumps off do you have him on a slip lead while he's on there um darlene uh, I got an urgent message from her uh, today, actually. Um, she's hosting a New Year's party, and she said, help, New Year's Eve is coming, and I'm really freaked out because all of a sudden our six-year-old German Shepherd named Hallie has started counter-surfing, and I'm scared that she's going to get into all the food. Ah, that's what they do. Why did this start all of a sudden when it wasn't there before? She knows all obedience and can hold a sit and a down no problem, so I don't understand why this has started. I need to stop this yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so you're hosting a party. Um, okay, dogs are opportunistic, right? Um, this behavior 
has probably been in there a long time. I've talked about this before. So Darlene, there's other little bratty things that I can guarantee have been happening that's kind of led up to this point. And now there's a sense of entitlement and now your dog's going, well, screw it. I mean, there's food on the counter. I'm just going to go for it, right? Um, so I made some notes on this too. Now, counter surfing is really dangerous. It kills dogs every day because dogs get into stuff that they can't have. They get into chocolate. They get into um, meat that has bones in it and they can choke. They get into... Um, Oh God, there's tons of food that dogs shouldn't have. There's tons of things for them to choke on. Um, they can slip off the counter and hurt themselves. Believe it or not, I've heard about that. Um, so option one, and I don't know that this is going to be your best option because it might take some time. Uh, train the place command. I will link up my foundation playlist in the comments below, but you're going to train the place command and you're going to try and condition it, right? So when you train the place command, your dog is less likely to make bad decisions around food. So you're going to have to use food on the counter to condition it. Um, problem with place command is that it, I usually have clients work on duration of it for a week when they're there in the room. So you know what? It wouldn't hurt to start that. Uh, what else I'm going to say is what else did I write for this? So another option is that you can use a deterrent for this. Um, a sock full of pennies or calm down. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you to hit your dog with it. Um, a can of pennies, something that makes a really loud noise, uh, an air horn, which is a little obnoxious, but can also work. We need something that's loud that will startle your dog. And you're going to have to set this up. Um, so you're going to have to put food really close to the counter and you're going to have to be in the room with her. And the problem with this is that dogs quickly become really wise to when you're not in the room and you're not holding that can of pennies or you're not there with the air horn. Uh, actually, on that note, I just remembered something that we did a while ago. We set up FaceTime and had it on the counter right above the food and we could see when the dog jumped up and we could actually sound the air horn from the other room. And it worked to deter the dog a little bit. If you wanna know though, the quickest way to stop counter surfing is a leash correction, hands down. Uh, and the most effective way to do this is with a prong collar. Um, I don't suggest that you start with this right away. I'd like to get a little bit of um, communication with your dog in with the prongs and really soft, gentle work before we go and we need to get tough. Um, I just think it's more fair with the dog. So if you can get your hands German Shepherd, probably need a three millimeter Herm Springer. Darlene, I know that you're in Vancouver. Um, dogsportgear.ca sells these. Uh, it's where I buy them for or from for my clients and for the programs. Um, and what you're going to do, you're going to put the leash and preferably prong collar on. Um, I just made notes. Um, Right, you're gonna put the food on the counter and you're gonna walk your dog around. And then you're gonna stop. You're gonna give your dog a loose leash. That's important. The loose loose leash tells your dog that this is their decision to make. You're not holding them back from it at all. And the second the front paws leave the ground, I want you to do a pop on the leash downwards. Now it's not a tug, because then you're just pulling the dog down and they're kind of making their own decision. It's a quick pop and release. Now we always want to start out softer. We don't, I personally don't like going crazy right off the bat. I don't think it's fair to the dog. Um, I want to see if a softer one will work. Okay. Um, you'll know when you've given it a significant amount of interruption where your dog goes, okay, never mind. I don't need to do that. Counter surfing sucks. That's what we need to do. Counter surfing, any behavior that is extremely dangerous, you need to make it suck to make it stop right away. Okay. Um, not only are you going to lose your entire spread for New Year's Eve, your party, but you could lose your dog. And that's, that's really quite scary. Um, okay. So I am Michelle Sellers. I am at Cascadia Dog Training. Visit our website, CascadiaDogTraining.com. We are also on YouTube, Facebook, clearly, 
uh, and Instagram. And if you know somebody that needs a hand with their dog, share this post. Um, he jumps off. Okay, and he's on leash. Try speeding it up. Try not not quickly, Sheila, but try kind of you know going up up. See how he does. Up up. See how he does. Because what it'll do is you speed it up a little bit more. He's got to concentrate. Let's see how that goes with the treadmill training. Okay. Um, Maggie has been, well, I guess on here through me, uh, for the last couple weeks, it's sorry, going back to Sheila, it's on 1.3. Yeah. So start it off slow, go up to 1.3. I don't, that's not very fast, right? Like when I speed walk, it's at like, not that I speed walk on the tre <laughs> treadmill regularly, but, um, I think I when I run, it's at like a six point something. So where I want to eventually get him up to is a quick walk or a little trot because then he's really got to stay focused, okay? Um, when he's focused, he won't even really be interested in high value treat rewards. Um, so Maggie has an update on Elle and her crate and I was so excited to hear this. Um, Elle, Elle will now go into her crate on her own and go to sleep. What is our next step? This is all going so well. We don't want to screw it up now. LOL. Yeah, I know the feeling. Um, we haven't done anything except what you've told us, which is feed two meals a day in the crate. Door open five minutes a meal. Okay, cool. So um, she'll go in there on her own. She'll go to sleep. Sounds like she's fairly relaxed and she's kind of um, comfortable making it her own room. Um, so you can go. You don't have to, but you can go back to regular feedings outside of the crate now and hey Shaw day stranger stranger um so oh yeah you can go back to feeding outside the crate uh if you want you don't have to some dogs and especially multi-dog households which i don't think that you have i always recommend feeding in the crates only just avoid any nonsense um if that's too much for you just continue on as is um, when she's calm in there and you are at home, I can't stress that enough. This is your next step. Okay. Listen closely, Maggie, when you're at home and she's relaxed in the crate on her own accord, go up, close and latch the door and open it again. I want to see her reaction to that. Okay. We're not leaving her in there, closing the door and walking away. You're going to walk up, latch it, unlatch it, open the door. See how she does with that. Um, next step is going to be to, if she does fine with that, walk up, latch it. You're going to hang out for 10 seconds. Watch what she does. If she's totally calm, don't wait too long. That's one of the problems um, people encounter is that they think, oh, well, this is great. I'm just going to, the dog's calm. I'm just going to lock them in there for like two hours you got to work up slowly, right? And we got to quit while we're ahead. And we got to open the door while the dog is still calm and relaxed so that they don't associate any funny business with the crate. Um, so make this a regular exercise that you do. So go up and increase the time. If she's fine with 10 seconds, do that a few times in a row. If she never once kind of hesitates or anything like that, great. Try 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Um, eventually you'll work up to a minute and then two minutes and then five minutes. And then eventually you'll have her in there for an hour while you are home. Okay. That is the most important part. And then if, uh, if you email me back with an update on how that goes, we can chat next week about how to start introducing her to creating her when you leave. Um, awesome. I'm going to scroll back through and see okay good no other questions on that uh, I have another update uh, from Talia she's the one with her parents border collie from last week uh, the stalking behavior so she says I don't have an e-collar to interrupt and I still want to take her off leash fair enough um, we have been working on the heel around the neighborhood and haven't tried off leash since your advice nice uh, what can I do to stop charging when off leash without the e collar? Okay, so one thing that really helps, um, I actually 
Um, where did I get this from? I think it was one of my mentors. She said that what she does with her dog, and this was, you know, like a year and a half ago, and I've started to incorporate it with my own dog. Um, when say I don't have the e-collar on, or I just, I have the slip lead right there and he's right beside me. When we're approaching another dog before he even starts to get into that weird slinky thing, um, I put the leash on. I don't make a big deal about it. I just clip the leash on so that I can kind of control whether or not he's slinking and his reaction towards the other dogs. Um, and then another thing that I want you to do is once the other dogs maybe like 50 feet from you, I want you to calmly take her off the path and just have her sit. And if you do this every single time you pass a dog, what it's going to condition is that, you know, when we pass another dog, we stay calm. It's no big deal. Dogs can walk by us and we don't have to be a complete jackass, right? So, and you're also going to counter or you're going to condition against when other dogs walk past. We don't slink. The leash goes on. We go off to the side and we're polite. So I want you to tackle that step. And then we can talk a little bit more next week if you're around um, about how to kind of move forward from there and possibly use a long line. Maybe have her drag one. That's kind of a happy medium, right? Yeah. Good. Okay. So, Sarah, you guys, I got swamped this week with emails. Um, before I get to Sarah, I am Michelle Sellers. I am owner and head trainer, Cascadia Dog Training, North Vancouver, CascadiaDogTraining.com. Like us on Facebook, like us on Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube, all under the same name. Sarah says, we have a four-year-old chocolate lab who gets really uncomfortable when people come over. He will circle them and bark at them until he gets to know them. Hang on, Mark, if you're listening, this sounds a lot like Dusty. Um, I know that he would never do anything like bite our company, but it makes them and us nervous. Yeah probably, you know, 60, 70 pounds. Um, he does this especially with men, but sometimes with women too. Even if they calmly approach and get down to his level and hold out their hand for him to sniff. Well, okay. Uh, step one, don't have company approach your dog. I know, it sounds unreasonable. You have a lab. Life is supposed to be happy-go-lucky. You have a dog. You have a lab that is anxious around your company. So if you've been on before, you would have heard me talk about this. You're going to do crate, place, free. So you're going to create your dog 15 minutes before company's coming over. Okay. And you're going to, your dog will settle. Yes. They'll get all worked up again when company comes over, but your dog's going to be in the crate when they come in the door. What this does one, it tells your company, relax. Don't worry about it. I have a dog. I, I don't want to give you a manual. So just keep moving. Just ignore the dog. Right. It tells your dog. Yep. There's people here. None of your business. Don't even worry about it. Now, the next part's important. Don't put a time limit on this. You're gonna wait until your dog settles down on their own. Now, preferably the crate is kind of in another room from where you and your company head to, um, but you're gonna wait until your dog settles down on their own. Don't rush this. This could take five minutes, it could take 30 seconds, it could take 30 minutes, it could take an hour and a half, okay? But you're not gonna rush this. Once they are calm and relaxed in the crate, you're going to put the leash on and you're going to put them onto place and you're going to repeat. Okay. This time you can have place in the same room as where all your guests are. And what you're going to do, you're just going to walk up. You're going to pause. You're going to put your dog on place. And then you're going to um, wait till they settle. Right. You're going to leave the leash on. That's really important. If they get off, it's no nope, place. Good. Those are the three things. It's the only things my clients say to their dog when they step off a place is no. They walk over calmly, pick up the leash, say place, and then say good. No place, good. You're going to wait till your dog is nice and calm and relaxed on place and company is ignoring them. Now, when you go put a leash on your dog and you bring them out and you put them on place, I don't think anybody's going to mess with your dog. At least not anybody sane because they see that you're working with your dog and people really don't want to interrupt that. Okay? Um, and... What I wanted to talk about is we think that we live in a society where if we walk into someone's house and we don't approach their dog, we're being rude. But what it really is, is it's, it can be really anxiety provoking for some dogs. Okay, guys. So it's kind of like 
you know, me walking into the grocery store and some big, huge dude coming up and kissing me on the lips. That's an invasion of my personal space, right? I'm not going to like walking in the grocery store anymore. It could be why your dog gets really nervous and guests come over is because he thinks that they're going to get in his personal space. So by doing this crate place free, you're going to avoid all of that from happening. Okay. So, um, I have one more question. So unless I have stuff pop up down here, um, that will be it. And I've had a long day, so I can't say that I will be crushed by that. Although I did take five minutes out to take care of that pesky nosebleed. You guys, I'm so sorry about that. Um, so I was kind of emailing back and forth uh, with this guy, Devin who's got an anxious dog. So his original email to me was, how do I help my dog that has really bad anxiety? She's a three-year-old mutt shepherd cross and paces the house, barks at people walking by the windows and jumps at every noise she hears. Oh yeah, shepherds, anxious, neurotic. Um, I feel really badly for her and want to help her. The weird part is she's crate trained and as far as we know, she's fine when we leave. All right, so my very first question to Devin was, is she free fed? Like, is the food just put down? Um, and does she eat it all, all right away? Or does she kind of come and go? Uh, I heard back from Devin shortly and he said, we just keep a full bowl down all the time. Um, we like her to be able to have access to the food. She eats it as she gets hungry. So right there, that was the exact answer I was looking for. Something tells me that something's missing. Um, what sort I'm looking for um, instinctually with this dog, right? So dogs instinctually are born with different drives, right? One of them's prey drive, um, play drive, there's food drive. And I think that's what's missing from your dog. So she's totally fine when you guys leave and she's in the crate. That's fantastic. Uh, separation anxiety can be one of the hardest things to overcome. And what I want you to do, I have seen anxiety in dogs drop dramatically over, you know, a week or two of just doing this um, and also bad behaviors. I know that Sheila Holt can vouch for this. Um, you are going to measure out her food. You're going to feed her twice a day, once a day if you wish, but no more than twice a day. Um, it's a she, right? Yeah. So you're going to put her food bowl down. You're going to set the timer for five minutes. Once the five minutes is up, even if she's still eating, you're going to take the food bowl away and she doesn't get it again until the next meal. What you're doing is you're creating scarcity around the food. Um, it's not just there for coming and going, taking or leaving. What you're doing is you're creating meaning for this food, right? So only getting fed at certain times of the day and under certain, <laughs> she, oh yeah, no kidding. Only getting fed at certain times of the day from this place and for this long is really going to help your dog um, kind of overcome that anxiety. And I guess I should address why the anxiety happens. And it's because they don't know necessarily that they lost their food drive. They just know that something's missing. So it comes out in other areas. Um, another thing that I want you to do, man, it's a place command kind of night, you guys. Um, I want you to train the place command because uh, unlike for some people, uh, yours is going to be conditioned very easily. It sounds like you kind of, through our conversation that you kind of live on a busy street. There's cars coming and going. There's people coming and going with their dogs. So I'm, again, I'm going to post the link to the YouTube channel for my fundamentals playlist right there. And what I'm going to have you do is train the place command. And every time she gets off, so you're going to leave the leash on every time she gets off, it's just going to be no nope, place. Good. And she's going to learn every time she gets off, you put her back on. Eventually, she's just going to stay there. And that's also going to help her stay calm. All right. So combine that with no free feeding, five minutes only. Pick it up whether it's all eaten or not. Your dog may go two or three days without eating, Devin, but that's okay. Don't freak out. Your dog will be fine. Your dog will not starve themselves. Okay. I've never seen it happen. All I've seen happen is anxiety decrease. Okay. Ah, Sheila, it works, right? And it's super easy to condition. She says, we live on a busy corner too. I'm really strict on the place command. Yeah. So don't let your dogs bark at the window because it just gets them riled up more. So Sheila, you are doing everything right, my dear. I'm really proud of you. Devin, take a page from Sheila's book. 
Place command, no free feeding. You'll have a different dog in no time. All right, guys, I am going to go take care of whatever was happening here earlier. Um, and I am Michelle Sellers at Cascadia Dog Training. We are in Vancouver. We also service all of Metro Vancouver. We do exclusively in-home training. You don't have to go anywhere. We come to you. And ah, hug Sheila. Thanks so much, sweetheart. Um, we come to you. And good news, we are now experiencing more people than ever that live outside Metro Vancouver and need the help. And we're getting inquiries from these people. And we are doing um, Skype and FaceTime training through our foundation program. Um, it's a lot more limited, but you guys, it's how Morgan did it. I've got two other people interested and ready to sign up for it. And I'm really excited. I can't wait to tell you guys how it all goes. And speaking of excited, I am, I can't do the math, but I will have a very exciting announcement for you come just after the first week of January. So stay tuned for that. I love you all. I will see you next week. Now we're not doing Monday because that's New Year's Day. I have it in my calendar when I'm doing it. Um, let me jump back. I think I had it. Tuesday, January the 2nd at 7 o'clock. Now, Sheila, I may try and do it a little bit earlier. Let's see how it goes. But everybody, Happy New Year's. Keep your dogs safe. Keep them from counter surfing. Teach that place command. <laughs> you next year? What? Oh, see you next year. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that got me for a sec. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for supporting me. Share this. Have everybody, um, everybody join in in January. Let's get everybody's dogs trained. All right. Ah, love you all. Good night, guys.